Hey people, so this is me again. Uh, today I'm going to start with uh, my bunch of lessons on cosmology. So if you have seen my other videos, I made a, tel um, a playlist on telescopes. I have a playlist as well on classification of stars. And now I'm going to tell you about a little bit of cosmology. So today is going to be a little bit on the Doppler effect. Then we're going to talk about the Hubble's law, uh, the age of the universe, estimated age of the universe as well. Uh, quasars, and then finally the detection of extrasolar planets, and uh, it has a little bit of a surprise in the end as well, but you will have to wait for that. So, cosmology, which is the third part of this series of astrophysics videos. So, first of all, we need to know about the Doppler effect. Now, you may have learned about the Doppler effect already, and that's going to be when there is an apparent shift in the observed frequency or wavelength of a wave, and this is because you, the observer, and the source, so the stuff sending out the waves, are in relative motion to each other. So basically, um, someone is sending a wave, so a star, for example, is sending um, a bunch of electromagnetic waves, but if the star is moving in relation to you, although the frequency of the star is always that same one, it looks to us that we are getting a different one, so it's shifted a little bit, okay? Now, when you, the source or the observer, so if your relative motion overall adds for you to move away from each other, you get redshift. So that means that the wavelength goes towards the red part of the spectrum, so the wavelength increases and the frequency decreases. If you are instead moving in relation to each other in such a way that it'll, uh, you're moving towards each other, then you get blue shift. And again, now the wavelength decreases, goes towards the blue part of the spectrum, and the frequency increases. There is this formula that I think I have on the playlist of the quantum phenomena that says that the speed of a wave equals the wavelength times the frequency. So the speed of wave is the same. Therefore, if the frequency increases, wavelength decreases. If wavelength increases, frequency decreases. Okay? And then just there is an extension. So why astronomers say that the universe is expanding? And there's going to be more on that later on, but it's because everywhere, or almost everywhere we look in the universe, we see redshift, meaning that things seem to be moving away from us. Some cases we are going to get blue shift, but let's wait until we get there. But everywhere in the universe we see redshift, so it looks like the universe is expanding, okay? Now, the Doppler effect, so the definition is there again, so um, there is an apparent shift, so it's not a real shift, it's an apparent one, it looks like something moved in terms of frequency or wavelength, and it is because of a relative motion between the source that is sending the waves and the observer, so you, okay? And it comes with a quite a nice demo, obviously. I cannot do the demo here, but it's very easy for you to see. Uh, go on the street or even play a video uh, where you have an ambulance sounding or a police car sounding or a bell and you can attach a bell to a string, which is what I do in lessons. Well, uh, the bell is now broken, but you attach the bell to the string and then you uh, get the string to go in circular motion. So you get the string on top of your head and then you just go and make the bell go in circular motion. The bell always sends the same sound, so the same frequency, but according if the bell is moving towards you or away from you, it's going to uh, look like the sound is different pitched, meaning the frequency changes. For example, this guy on the bike, uh, the sound is still the same, the sound waves, but as he approaches this observer in here, he's moving towards the observer. So the wavelength decreases in the frequency that the guy receives the waves from the guy on the motorbike is increased, okay? On the other way, he's moving away from the girl. So although he sends the same frequencies, and as you can see, you can now have where I took this image from the internet, uh, as the frequency is the same, but it looks like the wavelength increases, and now she doesn't feel, or she doesn't hear the waves, or get the waves as often, so the frequency decreases, okay? So, blue shift and red shift, how do they actually look like? 
So here it is. This is a spectra of a star at rest. And as you already know from previous videos, there are these things called the absorption lines. So when I have an electron moving to an outer shell in its energy, therefore it absorbs a photon, and this photon is going to have a very specific wavelength or frequency. So when the star is at rest, that's where the waves are, okay? That's where the, my absorption lines are, okay? If the star moves towards me, then all the waves shift towards the blue part of the spectrum. I get blue shift. And then if the star moves away from me, all the lines are going to move towards the red part of the spectrum. So there is a shift to the red, therefore a red shift, okay? Now, I did have a question in the lesson on how do we know if there are blue shift or red shift, or w what do we know where the rest is. Uh, there are several ways we can know. First of all, we have a catalog of data of where, according to the chemical elements of the stars, of where the absorption lines should be. And the other thing is, if I keep observing a star, let's say for a period of a month, and I keep seeing blue shift, red shift, blue shift, red shift, I know that if the star would be at rest, I would be more or less in the middle, okay? There is some data that I can use to figure out where the rest is. And here's an another example. So I have here an object, and there's another object in here. So stationary source, no shift whatsoever. Approaching the source, a shift to the blue part of the spectrum, therefore blue shift. Wavelength decreases, frequency increases, and receding, moving away from the source, a shift to the red part of the spectrum, meaning wavelength increases and frequency decreases, okay? So blue shift, you, the source, or boat are moving towards each other. Red shift, you, the source, or boat are moving away from each other. So, quick exercise, uh, if the following sentences are related to blue or red shift, okay? So, pause it, give it a go, try it, and then um, move on once you're ready, okay? So, answers will be, moving away is red shift, frequency seems to increase, blue shift, the wavelength seems to decrease, blue shift as well, the sound is lower pitched, okay? You should say lower pitched than before. Red shift, because the frequency decreases. Pitch has to do with the frequency of a sound. The wavelength seems to increase. Red shift, moving towards each other. Blue shift, frequency seems to decrease. Red shift, apparent shift to the red part of the spectrum. Red shift, apparent shift to the blue part of the spectrum. Blue shifts. Okay, more on this stuff. Now, I can, especially if I have an object moving at a velocity much smaller than the speed of light, so up to 0.42 the speed of light, I can use the following formula in here to figure out the shift of the waves, for example, if I have blue or red shift, okay? So delta lambda stands for the wavelength shift. Is uh, divided by the wavelength of the source when it's not moving, so lambda zero, is going to be equal to V, the velocity of the source uh, in the line of our sight, divided by C, the speed of light, okay? And then, this is going to come later on, but masses of other objects can be found from the velocities of the objects orbiting them at known distances in a known time, okay? But it actually comes later on. So I can use that formula, okay? And obviously I can use the same formula for uh, the frequency. However, if it's frequency, because there is a relationship between the speed, the wavelength, and the frequency, I would have delta F over F, and this would be the observed uh, frequency, equals V over C, okay? There is, um, oh, just before I give you an example, if you happen to be doing AQA, um, in your books, this may uh, uh, seem different. So they show that the red shift equals delta F over F equals V over C. Uh, for wavelength, they do delta lambda over lambda equals minus V over C, where the negative sign is to remind you that the wavelength decreases if the source is approaching. Either way, and even if you do AQA, you still get the calculations right as long as you know what a minus sign means, okay? So it means that you are going in the opposite direction in terms of velocity, for example, to what you were deciding was positive, okay? So that's a simple note. You can skip it completely.
uh, if you don't want to, of course. Now, exercise. There is a small issue with this exercise. I'll tell you what it is in a second. And thank you to the students that spotted that out. Um, so, hi. Uh, now, a common type of speed camera called blah, 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 transmits a radar beam at a frequency 2.4, no, sorry, 24.11 gigahertz, or gigahertz, actually. A car comes towards the camera at 50 miles per hour, which is 22.4 meters per second, in a 30 miles per hour zone. And then what is the change in frequency of the reflected radar signal? Now, this is taken from an exam, okay? And what they did is the shift of frequency will be the frequency times the ratio of the velocity over the speed of light. And this would give you 1,800 hertz. Now, for this, in a, from the formulas, for this to be right, this 24.11 should be the frequency that I would receive, okay, the, the observed frequency, which is quite not, okay, but let's not make a big issue out of this, let's just move, make the calculations, but is the wording is not ideal, okay, but just so you know, this is how things actually can come in an exam, okay, so make sure that you understand completely what they want from you and show the calculations, you can always get marks even if the final answer is not right, okay. Uh, finally, I'm going just to leave a couple of questions in here. I'll show you the answers in a second. So again, if you are doing this and you want to do the exercises, pause the video and then I'm going to show the answers in the next slide. And if you don't want to, just stop the video right now and just move on with your life. So these are the questions. Answers now for A, answer for B. Answer for three, C, sorry, and answer for D, okay? Again, I'm not going to spend 10 minutes now leaving this on, so pause the video to get the answers. And if you have any questions, drop me a message. If you happen to know me personally, talk to me in person. And otherwise, or otherwise, uh, take care of yourselves and see you in the next video. So I'm going to move away from here, and bye, take care.